Are you thinking about flying your drone for business? Whether you want to film real estate, inspect roofs, map job sites, or make side income with aerial photos, commercial flying in the US runs on one set of rules, which is part 107. The good news is that the rules aren't complicated once someone actually explains them clearly. And this video walks you through the core regulations every commercial drone pilot needs to know, the limits that apply to every flight, and when you can legally fly over people or vehicles. Let's break it down. Hey everyone, I'm Adam with UAV Coach, where we help drone pilots fly safely, legally, and confidently. If you're flying for work, for a business, for a client, or any way that benefits someone else, you're flying under the FAA's Part 107 rule set. So let's break down what that means in the real world. First, the basics. To fly commercially, you must be at least 16 years old and are required to pass the FAA Part 107 Aeronautical Knowledge Test to get your remote pilot certificate, which is what most people call a Part 107 license. Either you have one or you're flying directly supervised by someone who does and can take control immediately. But 99% of commercial pilots just get certified so they don't have to worry about supervision. To get Part 107 certified, you need to pass the Part 107 exam, which is a 60 question exam you take at a PSI testing center. We have an online test prep course that helps you study and pass the exam on your first try, linked below. Commercial flying also means you're operating a small unmanned aircraft system, basically any drone that's under 55 pounds, including accessories. You're required to register your drone regardless of weight, and it must broadcast remote ID. If your drone doesn't have remote ID built in, then you must attach an external remote ID module. Now let's get into the operational rules. You have to keep your drone within visual line of sight. This means that either you or a visual observer must be able to see the aircraft at all times without binoculars or a monitor. If you lose sight, you have to fix it. You can fly at night if you've completed the updated night training and your drone has anti-collision lighting visible for at least three statute miles. Your drone has a few limits. The maximum ground speed is 87 knots or 100 miles per hour. The maximum altitude you can fly is 400 feet above ground level unless you stay within 400 feet horizontally of a structure. Then you can go up to 400 feet above that structure. And you must stay 500 feet below clouds and 2,000 feet horizontally from them. You always yield demand aircraft and you can't operate carelessly or recklessly. You can't drop objects in a way that creates a hazard and you can't carry hazardous materials. If you're operating from a moving car or a boat, you can only do it in sparsely populated areas and not while delivering someone else's property for hire. And if you're flying in controlled airspace, which is class B, C, D, or E, you need permission first, usually through free Lance apps like Autopilot or Aloft. If you wanna fly in zero grid areas, like near airports or higher than posted altitudes, you can get further coordination through the FAA drone zone which requires submitting an application for a real person to look at and approve. Now, one of the biggest topics that confuses a lot of pilots is flying over people and over moving vehicles. There are two ways to do this legally. Either your drone qualifies under one of the FAA's categories for flights over people, or you apply for a waiver that gives you approval to do so, often for an extended period. You can always fly over your own crew, meaning yourself, and anyone directly involved in the operation, like visual observers. For random bystanders, a few baseline rules always apply. You need to be Part 107 certified, your drone must broadcast remote ID, have propeller guards, and you need anti-collision lighting. In some cases, a visual observer may be required to help maintain visual line of sight. From there, it mostly comes down to the weight and safety design of the drone. If it weighs under 249 grams or 0.55 pounds with those safety accessories attached, you're generally good to go, meaning no waiver is needed. Drones that fit these requirements include the DJI Neo or lightweight custom FPV builds. If your drone falls between about 249 and 399 grams, such as the DJI Avada 2 or some of the mini series, when fully equipped, you'll need a waiver from the FAA before flying over people. And if your drone weighs over 399 grams, you'll need that same waiver plus an ASTM certified parachute system. In short, the heavier your drone, the more the FAA expects you to prove it can operate safely around people. Now, here's how the FAA actually classifies these operations. 
The agency uses four drone categories to determine what's considered safe. Category 1 drones weigh under 250 grams, or about 0.55 pounds, including everything attached. They can fly over people and at night as long as remote ID is active, and there are no exposed rotating parts that could cause injury. This category is where the DJI NEO would fall into, like I mentioned previously. Categories 2 through 4 cover larger, more advanced drones that have undergone FAA testing or certification to prove they're safe for these kinds of flights. In reality, very few consumer or commercial drones meet these requirements today. These categories mainly apply to specialized or industrial aircraft, not the ones most everyday pilots use. So the best bet would be getting a waiver for most of your flights. The same logic applies to moving vehicles. If your drone fits into category one, two, or three, you can only fly over people and moving cars if you're in a closed or restricted access area where everyone knows a drone may be overhead or you avoid sustained flight over the vehicles. Essentially, flying across a road briefly is okay, but hovering or orbiting over traffic is not. For category four drones, you can fly over people or moving vehicles as long as it's allowed in the aircraft's approved flight manual or by the FAA. If your drone doesn't meet any of these categories, a waiver is the workaround. And as you can see, not a lot of drones actually fit into these categories, so the answer for a lot of pilots is to apply for a waiver. We have a video about how to apply for these types of waivers, which you can check out in the link below. Even though these categories sound technical, their purpose is pretty simple, and it's to prevent a falling drone from seriously hurting someone. Now, a few final musts for every commercial flight. First, do a quick pre-flight check. Make sure that you're aware of the weather, the airspace, people, hazards, battery levels, control links, payload security, all of that kind of stuff. Next, stay aware of TFRs, which are temporary flight restrictions, especially around stadiums, VIP travel, so like if the president is traveling somewhere, or wildfire zones. And if an operation results in serious injury, loss of consciousness, or more than $500 of property damage, not including the drone, you have 10 days to report it to the FAA. This all might feel like a lot, but once you've flown a few missions, a lot of these rules become second nature. Now, if you want to become a certified commercial pilot, or you need help passing the Part 107 exam, well, we've trained over 75,000 pilots through our online test prep course, Drone Pilot Ground School. That includes step-by-step -step video training, quizzes, weekly Zoom sessions with a Part 107 expert, and full practice tests. Check out the link in the description to learn more and grab your discount before it's gone. Let us know if you have any more questions about commercial drone rules, and if you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future drone videos. Until next time, blue skies and safe flying.